Today we're going to unbox the Dell T630 server. So let's open it up. We've got the uh, front bezel. And in here we have some uh, power cords. And some packaging material. And then we're going to have the, uh, the server itself. It's going to be pretty heavy. Dell says make sure you have two people. And of course we don't want to bang it. So when I pull it out, I always do a quick visual check. I've actually seen servers come with dents in them, and I've actually seen motherboards get dislodged. So I always do a quick visual check. Uh, I always like to make sure my power supply is coming in and out real easy. They got a little bit of a snap to them when they go out, when they go in, and they should be a little bit good pull to get them out. I like to make sure they slide in and out real good. I'll do an open it up, do a quick check inside. And I'll do a quick examination to see that things are good, things are lodged, uh, the fans are clicked in, they're not damaged, they're not messed up. I'll pull this out, do a quick look, see that nothing's popped out. I've seen some memory modules popped out before, so no memory modules popped out. I got my uh, H730 perk card sitting here. I have my uh, dual SD card sitting here, back plane looks fine. I'll check my SAS connections, my power connections. So a quick visual check, no obvious problems. Now the T630 server, which this is, is a tower chassis. You can get it in a rack mount version. It's a 1U flavor, getting real condensed. And if you need that, fine. This is a tower version, and you can rack mount the tower version. You can get a rack kit. This piece comes off and it connects here and on the bottom you can actually see that it's already kind of ready to go with the rack mount with the little sliders here where they clip onto a rail. You can also get some casters that go on the bottom if you're going to stay with the tower version. I like the tower version, you have a lot more room. You can go with uh, full 3.5 inch drives if you need to. Just a lot more um, uh, room if, if you have it in your, uh, in your server environment. So this is going to be a 5U if you end up mounting it. Uh, if you leave it in a tower chassis, of course, it's still designed as a 19 inch uh, environment. Now in this particular server we have um, 1100 watt power supplies. When you choose your power supply option you um, you don't necessarily need something that powerful uh, depending on how many drives and how much CPU power you're going to pull you want to decide how big your power supplies are going to be. I always suggest going redundant. You can't really think of very many server situations where you wouldn't just pay for the redundant power supplies. That's pretty much a, a given that you're going to always do. On this particular server, we went with a full eight drives. Um, we have four 1.2 terabyte, 10,000 RPM, SAS 6 hard drives. And these are actually 2.5 inch drives that are inside of a caddy. These drives are gonna be good for a little more spindle speed uh, versus um, space. On the bottom, we have two terabyte, 7.2K SAS drives, also six gig per second. These are full 3.5 inch drives kind of your standard drive. And these are all Dell certified. You gotta get the Dell certified, otherwise the open managed software kinda of gets mad at you. And in this config, we're actually gonna do two RAID 10s. Of course, you can do RAID 5, RAID 6. You can do a lot of different RAID configs. I'm a RAID 10 fan. Um, it costs a little bit more because you're gonna have an extra disc, minimum 10, uh, four discs in a RAID 10 versus like a RAID 5 where you can get by with three discs. But in a RAID 10 environment, you have striped and mirroring. So what happens is when these four drives are um, in a RAID 10 layout, you actually have a, a mirroring of these drives and a mirroring of these drives and then a striping of the pair. So if I had a failure on this drive on a RAID 10, I could actually have a second drive failure on my RAID 10 and still be okay. I could not have this drive fail on a RAID 10, I would have a problem. But a RAID 10 is going to give you the benefit of mirroring and the benefit of striping. So I'm definitely a RAID 10 fan if your budget holds it. So we're going to go with two RAID 10s here, a little bit faster on this one. Uh, so that some of my services that are a little more disk intensive, we're going to stick here. And some of the things that are a little less disk intensive but need the storage capacity, we'll stick on this one. Now I'm, a, I'm also a fan of getting an optical drive built into it. It's like 60 bucks from Dell, but man, the day that you actually need it, you're going to wish you had it. So I'm definitely a fan of keeping that. We also got the 8GB flash card option on here, totally optional, probably never going to use it in most environments. What's cool with this is if you use something like ESX, you can actually take this SD card, 
stick it in your laptop, copy over a 2012 or a server install image. You can actually boot to it uh, or, or add it as a, a bootable image and you can actually boot to it and load your OS. So those are also nice, nice flavors. Now on the inside, we chose to go uh, with the dual CPU layout. Uh, we chose to go with 2640s, uh, which is a 2.6 gigahertz processor. Uh, they're uh, eight core processors. Of course, hyperthreading is going to show a 16 core. Now with two of them, I'm going to show us 32 cores that are available. And you really got to size that right to your environment. Just because you have more cores isn't always better. Just because you have a higher clock rate isn't always better. There's also a GT uh, throughput, which is important to measure. It's kind of like um, pressure and volume. You may have an environment that needs lots of pressure, um, uh, single threads that need to go very quickly, or a high clock rate or a high GT, but you may not need the volume. You may need a lot of volume, but not a lot of pressure, depending on the application. Lots and lots of processes running at one time, that's a lot of volume. One process that's very, very intensive, that's high pressure, less volume. Uh, so you have a lot of VMs, a lot of processes running. You're going to want to try to have more cores. Clock rate is important, but having lots of cores where the load can get balanced is going to be um, really helpful. And you might say, well, just get a ton of cores. Well, that's great, but there's a cost factor. So you have to balance the cost and your performance and find the right uh, balance. Now, we went with a total of 120 gig of memory on this layout. We chose 16 gig memory modules. You have to they have to be matched up. You can't mix and match them. If you go with 8 gig, you end up filling more slots. Price would have been about the same, but uh, I wouldn't have as much expansion options. You go with 32 gig modules, and then what happens is uh, they're a little more expensive, uh, and I have plenty of room for expansion for this particular layout. So the 16 gig was the right fit for the price, uh, the least amount of uh, cost, but still lots of a large amount of flexibility. So we went with that layout. These are thermal transfer. Uh, for, for cooling, so it's very important that when the server is on that these are installed, otherwise you're going to have some cooling issues real quick and real fast. Uh, on this one we went with the PERC H710 RAID card, uh, the PERC, PERC controller card, and uh, we have a SAS connection to our backplane with a 1 gig uh, cache on this card. The other thing that's really nice on here is we went with the dual SD cards for the ESX install. Now what's really nice with this, these are redundant SD cards. So the ESXi image is actually loaded up on the SD cards and it can survive a failure. So your operating system of your ESX is actually loaded on the SD cards, not on your disks. Your disk becomes uh, volumes that you can attach uh, and then load up your, your VMs on. So it's a real quick overview of the T630 from Dell. Uh, it's a 13G server. Uh, it's a great unit. We're real happy with the performance and the product. So uh, next we're going to boot it up.